folks, each Chip and Rob are out here in an undisclosed location in the Intermountain West. And I uh, thought we'd show you another style of building with adobe. This is a more traditional Pueblo style. And, and as you'll see, this wall right here has been covered in a plaster made with adobe mud. And, and it does have stone in it, but it also has straw mixed in it, which is really good for tempering the the uh, cement and keeping it from shrinking and cracking. This this house is also interesting in that it employs you know, the traditional method of Viga and Latia ceilings um, uh, where you've got these very large pine logs, usually ponderosa pine, that are peeled and laid across the top as headers. And then at a 90 degree angle to those are laid Latias. And then the whole roof is covered with earth um, in order to, uh, you know, to protect it. And it basically becomes a living roof. Uh, where, as you can see on this one, we've got cactus growing and uh, other plant life. So this house it was probably built, my guess would be in the 30s or 40s or remodeled in the 30s or 40s um, because I'm seeing that this has a lot of round nails in it and there are a lot of elements like wainscot and beadboard uh, back in some of these rooms that um, indicate uh, that this house is older, maybe the 1930s but uh, still a very traditional method of architecture, and we're gonna show you around, show it to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And folks, this just goes to show you what happens when you don't maintain adobe structures. Uh, the roof uh, eventually caves in. As you can see, these large vigas, these things are, you know, some of them are a foot in diameter, um, have fallen in. And then the latia is above them, uh, which appears to be some sawn wood, and the earth with it and the roofing and uh, plant life that was growing up on it with it. And uh, so you got to maintain these adobe buildings if you want to you want to continue to live in them. As you can see over on this wall here, the, the, aside from the graffiti, you can see that the uh, same clay slip or plaster, lime plaster, has been applied uh, and makes a very pretty wall. And uh, so, anyway. And one of the questions that people ask about Adobe is how do you possibly hang a picture on the wall? Well, they're showing you right here exactly how it's done. When they were laying the brick, they installed a piece of wood, or several, it can be several pieces of wood, that are installed along the courses of brick that act as anchors for pictures or mirrors, or uh, if they're lower down, perhaps to anchor a sink. Uh, or something like that. So, that's pretty, pretty clever idea there how they did that. There's a hole. Is that where the chimney went? It's where a stove or a chimney or something went. Yeah. And right above your head, there's a hole where stuff is just eroding out immediately above your head. Now, folks, what you see here, and this appears to, uh, it could be an older part of the house, which may be quite old. Uh, given the type of construction here. This is the more traditional Viga and Latia construction where you see actual smaller poles that are laid at a 90 degree angle to the Vigas. Um, this is what you see in more traditional Pueblo architecture and some of the ancient stuff. Um, I notice also that uh, the, uh, the overburden, the soil that's been placed on top, unlike the other portion, there's no uh, asphalt paper that's laid in between it. So it could be that this section of the house is very, very old and that the front section was uh, added to it later on. So what you see here from the outside of the building is, of course, the adobe bridge, bricks which have seriously eroded. But you'll notice that the mortar is fairly thick on these. The bricks are thick and they're actually wide. There are whole, all kinds of things that have been stuffed into this mud as temper. Right here is a, is a corn cob, a piece of corn cob that was stuffed in here to use as temper. And then you've got stones, 
little pieces of wood, pieces of straw, pieces of plant material, uh, just all mixed in uh, to try to temper and strengthen this brick. Um, other things I notice are these split logs that act as anchors or actually shims for this door opening. It appears that when they built this structure, they had a certain size of door frame in mind, and then, you know, at some point, they came in and shimmed it in, uh, either to plumb the door uh, or to narrow it, because it appears that the door is quite a bit more narrow than the original opening, and then they came in and stuffed the opening with pieces of wood and more adobe brick and mortar. It's a very interesting, uh, very interesting construction. I especially like the corn cob. You know, one of the um, <clears throat> really unique qualities about something like Adobe is that it's very adaptable. You can see this wall, this exterior wall here, we have an original lintel that was placed over a window and then for some reason or another they opted later on to fill the window in. You can see a very defined seam here uh, where they just filled it back in with adobe and closed up the window. Or they decided when they were building that they didn't want to do it after all just filled in the hole. And that's one of the beauties of a building material like adobe. Um, you can build onto it, you can tear it out, you can cut it um, and um, you know just plaster more in if you need and uh, it's just a very workable material. Did you know, at one place, uh, before they had fired bricks in Rome, they couldn't build things over one story right. because they would collapse and All stuff. Right. It's kind of interesting to me that this one is two stories. Huh. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed... Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. So please, Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, so please subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check back with us later, and hang around until October because we've got a big special giveaway going on then. Anyway, have a great time. Catch you later.